Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. Let's start this episode by addressing a comment from D.H., one of our avid listeners. Mr. Vinette, thanks for your many years devoted to the North American Historical Institute, which often helped me with my research of history. You're welcome, D.H., and allow me to share with my audience the details of the organization you highlighted. The North American Historical Institute was an online concern dedicated to the advancement of North American historical studies. The Institute was a cyber learning center that presented and participated in lectures, conferences, tours, educational programs, and seminars throughout North America. The continent's military, political, social, economic, and racial histories were explored in conjunction with each specific discipline or area of interest. The Institute's main objectives were the research, study, critical analysis, publication, and circulation of historical information and knowledge regarding North America. The organization was a focal point for people interested in North American history from diverse perspectives. The Institute offered unique and valuable opportunities to professional and amateur historians, scholars, students, history buffs, and anyone else interested in the study of this continent's history. It provided information, contacts, internet links, and resources regarding specific periods of North American history. The Institute also assembled, recorded, and cataloged data in three languages, English, French, and Spanish, and was known in French as l'Institut Historique de l'Amérique du Nord, and in Spanish as the Instituto Histórico Norteamericano. It was an honor and privilege to be the founder, coordinator, and supervisor of this dedicated think tank, which operated from 1998 to 2019 and spawned this History of North America podcast and videocast series. One of my missions when operating this center of learning was propagating the appreciation and love of history to the continent's youth. I'm pleased to say that direct results were obtained in my own household, for my teenage twins manage a successful, family-friendly YouTube channel which offers science, crafts, travel, wildlife, and history videos for all ages, including concise North American history capsules. I urge you to check it out at youtube.com slash Sean and Kira. By the way, The History of North America series is a labor of love that I share with my son, Sean, who is my partner, audio technician, and sound editor. On that note, listener KC wonders how to get kids more interested in history. Okay, here we go. Don't just rely on the schools. Expose them to history materials at home. Share the experience with your young ones. Together, watch documentaries, films, video content, take turns reading books aloud, and listen to podcasts and audiobooks. Also, pick a topic, then do simple and basic historical research together. You will be learning, bonding, creating memories, and having fun all at the same time. Good luck, Casey! Now, let's take a few more questions from our growing worldwide audience. Listener ML from Southern Florida refers to episode 30 and asks, Mr. Vinette, Z is how I heard you pronounce the last letter of the alphabet. Why do Americans say Z? Z is the British pronunciation, and you're right. Z is chiefly American. I use both pronunciations according to circumstances. In episode 30, I was pronouncing the last initial of a listener from England. Therefore, I use the British Z. English speakers in Commonwealth countries, including Canada, also prefer the pronunciation Z. Here is a second follow-up question from RT, who is obviously passionate about weights and measures. Dear Mark, thanks for addressing my previous inquiries in episode 10 and 20 regarding the use of the terms kilometer or kilometer, mileage and the metric system. Please tell me more about the United States customary unit system of measurements. I just can't get enough. As a regular listener, RT knows that I alternately use the metric U.S. customary units and the British imperial systems in this series. 
As previously mentioned, the metric system, also named the International System of Units, has been adopted as the official system of weights and measures by most countries except for a few, including the United States. U.S. Customary Units is a system of measurements commonly used in the USA since it was formalized in 1832. This American system was developed from English units, which were in use in the British Empire before the U.S. became an independent country. The United Kingdom's system of measures was overhauled in 1824 to create the imperial system, which was officially adopted in 1826, changing the definitions of some of its units. Subsequently, while many U.S. units are essentially similar to their imperial counterparts, there are significant differences between the systems. To complicate things even further, Canada went metric in 1975, but still commonly uses both the U.S. and U.K. systems. Mexico officially adopted the decimal metric system in 1857. So, if you purchase a quart or liter of milk, or a gallon or liter of gasoline in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, or England, beware, you might not be getting what you bargained for. Good luck with your weights and measures, RT. And now a few comments, considerations, and reviews about this series, starting with listener RV, who writes, quote, My family and I enjoyed your recent deep survey of the Bible and its important influence on the early exploration and colonization of the continent. Thank you, Mark, for being respectful towards Christianity and Christian institutions. Few historians nowadays are. One must never forget that the modern nations of Mexico, USA, and Canada were founded on Judeo-Christian beliefs and principles, and they form an interesting and fascinating part of North America's history. God bless and keep up the good work. End quote. R.P. states, The Bible is a patchwork of various authors writing in different times, different styles, and for various purposes, using the same characters or variations on similar themes. Your recent presentation, comments, and analysis were reasoned, honest, and measured. J.V. said the following, Just watch the episode 37. So interesting. There are so many stories and tales about the life of Jesus. Probably not all true, but can be interpreted in different ways. The Old and New Testament episodes were good too. Well done. Here is a detailed review from BGD in Southeast Asia. Mark, I finally got around to listening, and I dipped into the podcast on Mound Civilizations because I'd read a book on them some years ago, and of course, the Vikings. Very, very good. I like your level of research and content. I think it's just about the right level for the platform. It assumes some level of interest and some level of historical education whilst also being full of interesting content that's bound to be new to anyone other than an expert or academic. The vocabulary and syntax are the right level and the narration is very professional. I couldn't find where the edits, cuts, splices were made. Very smooth and easy to listen to. Do I detect a background in public speaking or radio or voice coaching? The superior pacing, breath control, keyword emphasis, and enunciation are top shelf. I can tell that there's been a lot of work put into the script and it's paid off. This is better than most podcasts. Probably top 5%. I wonder if the listener needs to know who Mark Vinette is, his credentials, experience, bona fides. Does that even matter? I don't know. Thank you for the opportunity to listen to this, and I'll definitely be finding the time to listen to other episodes. Not being an American, this podcast fills in a lot of blanks for me. Thanks again, and good luck. Oh, what a wonderful and colorful review. Thanks, BGD. First-time listener from St. Petersburg, Florida, R.O., sent this. I watched some of your grand podcasts. Just learned what a podcast was. LOL. Very well done. Elements of our civil war might be worthy, as well as other U.S. scrapes and wars. Again, very, very well done. Stay tuned, R.O. The great continental conflicts are on the horizon and will be exciting to cover. AC compliments. I listened to the first three episodes of your podcast, right up my alley. I like that the episodes are 20 minutes or less. R.A. proclaimed, great work. F.W. also kept it short and sweet. Thanks, Mark. I like it. P. 
PM declared, I'm enjoying your podcasts. On number four now, two thumbs up. Keyboard Warrior SK from Illinois bugled, Love the short format for your show. KA on Facebook declares, Mark, your podcasts are great. BG sent me this direct message. Good bit of work there. I received this nice email from new Patreon member JW. Episode 35 was most interesting. I remember well the song by the four lads, Istanbul. It was a big hit in my day. I knew all the words. Well done, Mark. Another Patreon member who watches our episodes on YouTube reacted nicely when learning of our exclusive new ad-free content and bonus episodes, and I thank him for posting his kind note. We now have listeners and viewers in over 90 countries and continue to climb the ranking charts of many nations, including the Philippines, Norway, Romania, Germany, Saudi Arabia, Iceland, and we reach number 11 in Finland and number 13 in Portugal. Thanks again for joining me on this exciting adventure through time, exploring and focusing on the interesting, compelling, wonderful, and tragic stories of North America, its inhabitants, heroes, villains, leaders, environment, and geography. I find that my audience is very informed, intelligent, reflective, sage, and insightful. It's an honor and privilege to be your guide through the endlessly fascinating history of North America. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you'll join me next time. <laughs>